Hello everyone! Today we have a very, very anticipated video. If you've been on my channel recently, then you know that I have started to make custom photo card fillers for my pages, and it has caught the attention of a lot of people. Um, and I think it's because people are very curious on how I make my fillers look very similar to the actual photo cards and how I get the backs to look exactly the same and just tips and tricks for having super cohesive layouts and sets like I've started to do with mine. I didn't think that it would catch on or that people would be as interested in it as they have been, but people seem to really like the aesthetic of my binder, which is a big um, compliment to me and I really appreciate it. Uh, I struggled for a long time on how I should go about making this video because I want to make sure that like everyone has a good chance or like has a good method of being able to recreate them in the way that I show um, as much as they can. The reason being is I am a graphic designer this is stuff that I do every day for my job. I create all of my fillers in Photoshop and Illustrator, and I know those are not the most accessible for people who aren't in the industry, nor is it very user-friendly if you've never used it before. So I really wanted to make sure that I found a way to present to you on how you can make fillers like I do while doing it in a more free and also user-friendly way and I think I finally found the solution that will help you to make fillers like mine or give you ideas on how you can make your own fillers but at least you have a template and a starting point to do so. So uh, this video will be broken up into a couple different parts. I'm first going to um, walk you through how to make your templates and how to make your fillers and then we will come back and I will show you how I put them together and how I finalize them and stuff. I do want to say beforehand though that everyone's choice for their binder is valid. However you choose to decorate, however you choose to you know make your photo card patterns, your fillers, whatever you choose to do is valid and you know your binder should be a reflection of your own style and your personal self. So because I am a designer and because I love for things to be super cohesive and to make sense collectively, uh, this is why my fillers look the way they are. But if you would prefer to just do white paper, um, I know a lot of people do the fun um, colored fillers, um, like colored sleeves. A lot of people do hollow or broken glass sleeves like whatever you choose to do is valid I just know that a lot of people have caught wind of what I do and they're super interested in learning how to do it for themselves so I hope that this is helpful to you I am showing you stray kids because that is the group that I collect and that I do this for but obviously these methods and these tools are applicable for any group you just have to apply it to your group and their photo cards so let me move over to voiceover to show you how to get started and then we'll come back here. When it comes to finding imagery and designs for fillers, I would recommend starting at Pinterest. As you can see from my Pinterest page, it's very curated to Stray Kids, graphic design, Chani. <laughs> Let me just save this one really quick. The easiest thing to do would be to search photo card. And then when you do, you get a whole bunch of results for Mostly BTS, if I'm being honest, just because of their large fan base and for the large amount of um, fillers and cards that already exist out there. So if you don't find what you're looking for this way, you may have to be a little bit more specific. Next, let's see what they have as far as just photo card backs. So go ahead and search that. And as you can see, if you're looking for an hyphen or twice or again BTS, you're going to have a lot of options to choose from, which is nice if you stand those groups and that's what you're looking for. If you don't see what you're looking for, again, you probably have to be a little bit more specific and start to put in your group at this point. For Stray Kids specifically, as you can see, still not a whole lot comes up. Um, this is actually the most that I've seen from just the first page in quite a while. 
The trick is though to finding more photo card scans in the back of photo card is to click into these images and you'll then begin to see the related results which will lead you into finding more and more albums, more and more errors. So it's a little bit of like a hide and seek game where you have to just sort of dig to find what you're looking for if you can't find it right off the bat. If you still can't find what you're looking for, the next best thing that I would recommend is to take your own photos or to make your own scans. Personally, this is what I do most of the time because I like to have quality control over the images that I'm working from. But if you don't have options for either of those, I just wanted to show you that in case you didn't want to go through those steps, Pinterest is a pretty good way to try and find those without having to do that. Okay, so now let's say you have what you need for the back and you want something a little bit more general or a little bit more group related for the front of your filler. A great option is finding group photos from that specific album or era that you're looking for as it just really like ties together a page if there's no group card already included in your set. When it comes to finding the images that you want to use, I would recommend looking for ones that are in a vertical orientation because it'll work best for the layout that we're going to set up for the photo card. You can also look for images that will fit the concept of the photo card sets that you're making fillers for. Personally, I like to look for colored fabrics or colored textured images because I think it adds a little extra something rather than just a solid color. Another great place to find inspiration is through your group's Instagram. And if they're anything like Stray Kids, then they'll have posted a lot of photos and selfies from the music video set, from music promotions, from events that they're doing. And usually those incorporate really well because the photos were taken in the same place at the same time. If you've seen my Storing No Easy collection, then you may have already seen this filler. Um, I did use this photo that Changbin posted to make a filler because there is a photo card set where all the members had this flag in the background and it just tied everything together super nicely. Now that we have all of our images saved and compiled, we're going to start to make our layouts. So the program that I decided to showcase for this and to walk you through a little bit is called Canva. And Canva is an online graphic design program that is meant to be a lot more user friendly as well as budget friendly. They have a free and a pro option, but a lot of the stuff that I'm going to show you and that you can do is through the free version. So it should be pretty accessible for you and hopefully easy to use. To get started, you will click on the create design button and select a custom size. I'm going to put in an 8.5 by 11 size as that's the type of paper that I will be printing on in the end, but you set it to whatever size that you need to for your printer. Once you get in, it's a good idea to upload the images that you want to use so they're ready for you when you have everything set up. It may take a few minutes depending on how many you have, so that's why I recommend doing that first. Once all of them are uploaded, you're then going to look for the grid section and pick this first square. You'll be able to drop your images into this later and you're also able to pick the custom size that you want this to be. There's also this option called frame which has rounded edges, but you can't scale it to whatever you want. As you can see, you can only scale it proportionally, so I would just stick to the grid. Now I'm going to make it photo card size, so in inches it would be around 2.1 by 3.4 inches or 55 by 86 millimeters. And then I'm just going to duplicate it to make multiple so I can lay out the front and back of the design. You can do this by either holding alt and dragging it or there's a button at the top that you can use to duplicate it. And then I like to just center everything up and put it in the middle because that's just how my design brain likes to work. Once everything is laid out, it's super easy from here. You just need to go back to the media that you uploaded and drag and drop the images into the rectangles. Depending on the size that you uploaded, you may have to adjust the size. And to do this, you just double click into the image and then you should be able to adjust it. Something that I did notice and that you'll see me doing here is I couldn't quite figure out how to rotate my original image inside of the rectangle. I'm not sure if this is possible or if I was just missing the option to do that, 
but you may have to either crop or edit your image beforehand if it's not perfectly aligned so when you do drop it in you can scale it so it fits nicely inside of the rectangle. The next thing I like to do is to edit the photos just a little bit. When things are printed out, typically they're a lot duller than they appear on the screen. So adjusting some of these sliders will just help to up that contrast. So when it prints out, it can be a little bit more closer or truer to the colors of the photo cards that you're replicating. You can also make any adjustments to the images like covering something up or filling in a gap by grabbing another grid and changing the color using the eyedropper tool to the background. Now that the backs are done, you can repeat the exact same steps for the front, just adjusting and positioning everything until you like it. Once you have everything set up in the way that you want, you can go up to share and this is where you'll be able to download your design for printing. From the drop down, you can select the type of file that you want saved to. Usually PNGs, JPEGs, and PDFs are the most common for printing. Once selected, press download and it'll save a file to your computer. Now, if you're wondering how you can make more customized fillers, like you may have seen some of my other ones, um, as I've said, I have a little bit of an advantage because I can make everything that I want in Adobe and I have a lot more tools and tricks and just layouts that I'm able to accomplish that way. And typically, you know, there's going to be a lot more capabilities through an actual design program than one that is offered for free online. However, it is not impossible to do some of the same custom designs using Canva. It just may be a little bit trickier and more time consuming, but it's definitely doable. So my advice for creating more custom fillers that look like cards that already exist or they're trying to replicate a similar style to is to first pull in a reference photo that you can work from. From there, I would identify the main points of the design and what you need to pull in to make it look like it's the same card or of the same style. So for this one, you can see that there is a purple gradient as well as text that runs along the bottom that I want to replicate. So as you're seeing me kind of speed through this, there are options to make similar looking designs with Canva. It just takes some time and practice and playing around with the tools and options that they have available. I was trying to run through this pretty quickly because I think that if you are interested in this, that you should take your own time to sort of look up more in-depth tutorials that will help better teach you. But I did want to show you that doing something like this is possible because while I was rushing, I still got some pretty close designs and it gave me a good starting point if I want to further develop these anymore. Okay, so that's everything from me on voiceover end. So we're going to go back to in-person me where I'm going to talk about putting them together and the final product. Welcome back. So now that you've kind of learned the process, we're going to go about how to print them and then put them together. So I'm just going to clear the pages that I have, but if you, in case you haven't seen it, this is what the end result should be. Your backs will be the same backs as the original cards and then your middle card or whatever card you make resembles the theme that your layout has. So I have some leftover prints from when I did my Levanter fillers that I'm just going to be using for this um, 
because I didn't want to print off new pages. <laughs> so I already had these on hand. But this, I do the exact same thing regardless if I've already, if I already have these fillers or not. When it comes time to printing, I would recommend printing on a heavier paper rather than just normal paper, you know, like a cardstock or like a nice glossy paper. The reason I say this is because you're going to end up gluing these back to back and like thicker paper tends to just like lay flatter nicely when they're glued together and also it just gives them a bit more um, of a rigid feel like a normal photo card does. Of course if you don't have access to like cardstock or like thicker paper, printer paper is just fine. You'll just have to realize that it's going to be a bit thinner and flimsier so it's totally fine but I would just recommend cardstock or a thicker paper just because it makes it a little bit more sturdy like a normal photo card. You can also print these back to back if you know that your printer is capable of printing them exactly. Um, sometimes like when printers print out pages even if they're perfectly aligned there is some shifting so that's why I like to print them on two pages and then just glue them together because I know I can get the perfect fit. But again, it's all just dependent on what kind of printer you have and what you have access to. But once you finally get them printed out and they're looking very nice, you then just need to cut them out. Depending on how many um, I have to cut out, I'll either use scissors or I do have this paper cutter. It's not the best. It doesn't cut super straight all of the time. Um, but if I'm doing like a, a large quantity to save my hand, I will use a paper cutter. You can also use like a, a ruler and an X-Acto blade. But for this purpose, I think I'm just going to cut it out with scissors. Okay, and then once you have them all cut out, now it's time to just glue them together. So you can use any kind of glue or adhesive you have. I'm just gonna be using a glue stick, but using like those little um, tape dispensers or you know, any kind of glue that you have should work well. I usually just glue one side of it and then just stick it together. And what I actually like about the glue stick is because because it's not completely like dry when you put them together you have a little bit of wiggle room to like move it around in case it wasn't perfectly aligned but once you do get it aligned just make sure to squish it together really well so it kind of just becomes a one and then you have your filler and then you just repeat that for however many fillers that you made if you want them to be you know front and back and then when you've got them all glued together you have a similar looking filler i remember now why i have these fillers is because are these leftover fillers because they i remember i reprinted them because the colors didn't exactly match but they're close enough, right? Like in a binder sleeved, you wouldn't be able to tell much of a difference. And I mean with my more color graded one, which is the real card, <laughs> you know? Now I know not all photo cards are squared off. Um, the Levanter ones are, so, you know, I left them squared. But if your cards are rounded and you want to make sure that your filler cards are also rounded, you can do that. You can either do it with scissors and you can just round it off that way, or um, you can get a corner rounder. I picked this up off of Amazon. Um, I know you can get them at like Daiso, like really any craft supply store or scrapbooking store should have one of these. This one comes in three different sizes, so if the photo cards corners are rounded off at different sizes you can um, match that. I feel like a lot of them are usually this four millimeter corner size but it's really easy. You just stick it in and you make sure that it just aligns at the bottom and you punch it and it rounds it off just like that. And you do it to all four sides and then you have a rounded photo card filler. 
Now, I know that I just showed you how to make fillers for photo card size items, but you can do this with any size item or pocket page that you're trying to fill. Um, if you've seen my No Easy storing video, then you may be familiar with this particular filler. These were pre-order um, flip books that came with the No Easy album. I really wanted to display them in my binder, but I didn't want um, the backs of them to just be covered in a white page. I wanted the backs of my fillers to also show the backs of what the pre-order gift looks like because Again, I'm really particular about how my backs and the aesthetics of my binder looks. It's a bit overkill, maybe, but I really like that extra touch that it gives my binder. But like I said, even though I just showed you how to do it in Photocard, you can do the exact same thing for any size item. You just have to make sure that you size it proportionally and then you design what you're doing to that scale and print it out then. Same thing, you just cut it out if you're making it two-sided. This is only one side because I just wanted the back side to be the filler. You know, you can leave it white, you can glue them together. The possibilities are really endless when it comes to your binder and fillers. I hope that was helpful. I hope that I was able to explain it in a way that if you wanted to try this, that you were able to do so successfully. If you have questions, please let me know. I'll try to answer them as detailed as I can. But anyway, I hope that you enjoyed. I hope that what I gave you was helpful. If you choose to make fillers of your own, I would love to see them if you want to send them my way. I hope that you were able to get out of this what you needed and then you're able to make fun and beautiful things to put into your binders. And I will see you next time. Bye!